If you're a business owner and you have a high ticket closer on your high ticket coaching, consulting, or agency offer, and you want the close rate to be higher, or you want the follow-up to be better and stronger to get them on more demos so you can actually close more deals, because it's a general statistic that 80% of sales happens in the follow-up. So that means if you're not dialing in your follow-up game, that means you could literally 5X your business if you actually had your follow-up game dialed in. And so I'm gonna be going over this SOP that we made for high ticket closers uh, once I actually land roles with our clients on RepConnect. And so they can actually crush the actual opportunity and also the follow-up game because that's where most of the money is at. So I'm in this video, I'm just gonna be breaking down the actual flow. And if you have a high ticket closer on your team and you wanna use this video to actually train them as well, you can use this as an SOP. Doesn't really matter to us. It's just gonna help closers or business owners that have closers on their sales team. So with all that being said, let's jump right in. I'm not gonna waste too much time. See you later. Peace. What's going on, guys? If you're watching this video right now, this is our closer, uh, I guess, roll overview, kind of the process that we want you to follow as a high ticket closer on either one of our personal offers at RepConnect or one of our clients' offers, whatever the case may be. I'm just going to walk uh, through the high level overview on what exactly you'll do. So, obviously, you know, once you have an appointment, you know, it's booked, right? There's two things that are going to happen either the lead shows up to the appointment or the lead does not show up to the appointment. Now, I'm going to walk you through both scenarios and what to do uh, if, if this happens or either scenario. And I'm gonna emphasize the, the follow-up sequences and stuff that we follow, but let's just start real quick and go into the lead no-show. So if an appointment's booked onto your calendar, right? ideally we want you to be taking six to eight appointments a day. Now, some of them aren't gonna show, that's just the game, you guys already know this, but this is what we do when the lead actually doesn't show up, okay? So first thing I want you guys to do is notify the setter right away. So if your appointment was at 4 p.m., for example, and then you're on that call and the dude's not already on the call, I want you to go message whoever set that appointment and you can track it through our, our admin uh, CSV sheets and stuff like that and our CRM. I want you to go message whoever set that appointment and say, hey, you know, uh, this person didn't show up. Can you please follow up with them? All right. So now you're going to have the setter following up with the appointment and they're already trained on how to follow up and do all that work. You just have to let them know, hey, this person didn't show up. OK, now after you let them know, hey, this person didn't show up. Right. You're also going to follow up yourself. So on top of the setter now following up with the lead, trying to get them to show up to the appointment, you're also going to have yourself doing it because well, what else do you have to do? You're, the goal is to get the dude on the appointment so you can close the deal. There's no, there's no point having appointments if uh, you don't actually conduct demos and close some deals, right? So this is what you're going to do as the closer, right? You're going to self-follow up. You're going to call them. Okay, you're gonna send them an SMS message. Now you pretty, you're probably already in a three-way group chat between the lead, you, and uh, the the setter. And so I also, and that's probably on WhatsApp. I want you to also message them in WhatsApp. Like I want you to reach them on email, even whatever it takes for you to get in contact with this person. This is your goal for the first ten minutes of the meeting. So let's say the appointment was at four p.m. The next ten minutes, all the way up till four ten. Your goal is literally harassing this lead on, you know, calling them, SMSing them, WhatsApp grouping them, emailing them, whatever the case may be, multiple calls, multiple times within the, within the first five minutes to 10 minutes of the meeting. Okay. And your goal is to get them to show up. And then a good follow up script for, uh, S, uh, like a text message or the WhatsApp group is like, Hey, you know, or I'm in the meeting right now, uh, just waiting on you. Here is the Zoom link. And you send the Zoom link. So they have that because some people might not show up just because they didn't even know how to join the call. Right. And so you actually texting them and, you know, sending them the Zoom link and be like, Hey, I'm waiting in the Zoom call for you right now. I'm ready to, you know, help you or help start, help talk with you and, how we can potentially help you get to X desired result, right? So that's what you want to do. Um, and your goal for the first 10 minutes of them not showing up is to, do, is, is to do this. Now, guys, I do not. Okay, here's the thing. If you want to maintain your closer role with our offer or one of our clients offers that we've placed you into, you have to do this type of stuff. And I'm going to walk you through what to do as well. Like if you get to the point to where, oh, um, the dude didn't show up. Okay, next appointment. I'm just going to wait for my next demo. You're going to get fired really quickly because you got to understand that we are spending a lot of money on our personal offers or our clients' offers on ads and teams and setters to even get this person to book a call with you. So if you're going to be ungrateful and not treat it as if you just spent a thousand dollars to get this call and you're not going to treat it like that and you're not going to take it serious and you're not going to follow up then we're gonna notice that very quickly and we're gonna terminate your role, 
Like we're not playing around with this stuff. Like ideally we want you to obviously get a hundred percent show rate and take all your demos and close at a 30 plus percent rate. But like not every call is going to show and that's just going to happen. And so it's what you do when they don't show that's going to let you keep your role. And guys, this is a general statistic in sales. 80% of sales are in the follow-up. It's in the eight to 12th touch point. So that means you will literally 8x, yeah, 8x probably, if you're just getting that 20% call on closes, 8x your commissions, 8x the revenue we bring in by following up. And this, and the reason this is so important is because like we're doing direct marketing, right? We're sending them through so much pre-call content and nurturing them very well through sales reps, you know, videos, you know, the VSL, whatever the case may be, emails, text messages, like they're being very well nurtured before you even speak to them. And so you need to follow up. It is your job now to follow up with the setter and get them on the call, right? And if they don't get on the call, rebook another call. Now I'm going to get in that into a second, but the, the the best way I could possibly put this guys is like what I said earlier. Imagine you just spent $1,000 to get this phone call. Like how would you treat that lead? Right? And you knew that they were qualified. You knew they were interested in buying. You knew that they've already been pre-nurtured and you just spent 1k to get that booked appointment. What are you going to do? How are you going to reach out to this person? You're going to do exactly what I'm telling you to do. You're going to call them multiple times. You're going to send them text messages. You're going to send them emails. You're going to send them messages on the WhatsApp chat because you just spent 1K to get the appointment. And we probably are spending close to 1K, depending on the offer that you're working on. We spend hundreds to you know thousands of dollars, depending on the industry and the offer, to get these appointments for you guys, to be a closer. Like we're doing all the hard parts. We just need you to take the call with the nurtured lead and secure the investment. And there's so many people that would kill for these, these level of leads. And so if you're not going to follow up, we're just going to replace you. Now, obviously, like I said, we don't want to do that. We don't have to go. We don't have to go through it, the process of getting another closer and train them up again, but we will, because if you're not going to do your job, then we'll, we'll get somebody else. And so it's very important that you follow this. Right. And just once again, I'm just going to frame this. We need reminded more than we need taught. Act as if you just spent one K to get this appointment and know that this lead is qualified and interested in buying and knows what we do, and they're still interested, and they still booked a call after knowing it's paid, after knowing what it is. What are you gonna do with that lead? You're gonna follow up, and if you don't, you gotta go. All right, so now that I've made that very clear, <laughs> really emphasize the follow-up game, hopefully you understand follow up, follow up, follow up, okay? Now, for whatever reason, right, the lead doesn't uh, engage with you after, or the setter, and show up within you know the first 10, 15 minutes after the call, now you're going to move the lead to the no show nurture go high level stage. Now, when you move them to this stage, a couple things going to happen. Number one, now you and the setter at once actually have a track, uh, an organized CRM. So that's the first thing. The second thing is we also have email and SMS automations that will get triggered when you drag the lead to the, to the section where it says they didn't show up. And so what happens when that happens, they're going to get, follow-up automations to try and get them to rebook with you and on top of the automations don't rely on the automations that's not we're not just gonna be like oh the automation will take care of it no you and the setter and the automations are all going to do the follow-ups because like i said take this as a serious as if you just spent 1k to get this lead and book this call and it's already someone that's wanting to buy i want the automations hitting them up over text and sms or an email i want the setter calling and texting them, trying to rebook them. I want you calling and texting them, trying to rebook them in between your demos. Like this is your role. It's take new demos. It's follow up with people that have no showed. And then it's follow up with the people who like for the, like who have no show for the last 11 days. So that leads me to the next point. You're going to follow up with them for 11 days. You're going to put them in a 11 day follow up sequence because they didn't show up. Okay. Now guys, the question here is, are you going to, would you rather prioritize people who are cold leads, not qualified, or would you rather prioritize people who are qualified, pre-nurtured, went through our VSL, went through the 3A WhatsApp group chat, got introduced, went through the entire process, went through our free community and our free training and our free nurture information. Are you going to prioritize that person or someone that's cold and, and new to the space and whatever the case may be? Obviously, you're going to want to talk to the guy who's already been nurtured for, you know, a few days and gone through stuff and watched our VSL, knows how we work and knows it's paid and then still decided to book. And so that's why follow up, 
you know, stuff comes up, maybe something, you know, a family problem or a matter came up and they just couldn't make the call or maybe their phone's dead for three days, whatever the case may be, whatever it is, right? And you'll catch them on day four. Or if they don't reply for the first six days and you catch them on day seven, it's like, hey, my grandma just died. Like I just have not been on my phone. I'd love to rebook, man. I'm, I'm more available now. Bam, easy close. They're already pre-nurtured. This is why follow-up is so important, right? Because stuff comes up, we know this, right? So just follow up with them for 11 days and organize the follow-ups. This is very, 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 very important, okay? So two times a day in between your demos, call these leads that you know are qualified and have already been pre-nurtured and just didn't show up to the call. Do this for 11 days and, on, and do it to the best of your ability. And I want you to know, on top of you doing this, the phone setter and the DM setter, whoever booked the call, is also gonna be doing two, two uh, texting, calling twice a day on top of you doing it and on top of the automations following up with them. Like we're gonna hit them like crazy to get them to rebook because we know they're a qualified lead and we've spent a lot of money to even get this lead to engage with us. And so it's very important. The follow-up game is everything in sales. Okay, and if you're a good closer and you're a professional, which hopefully you are watching this video, we wanna hire, we wanna work with professionals, you already know that follow-up is where all the money's at, right? And like I said, I'm gonna say this again, 80% of sales are in the follow-up. So if you kill the follow-up game, you will 8x your commissions. You will 8x the business's revenue and you will just 8x your you know, lead to close rate overall. And so follow up on top of the set or on top of the automations. Be a good closer. This is one. This is like a really big part of your role. And then obviously your other part of your role is taking new demos and closing deals with people who actually show up. But the people who don't, they're still probably interested. Something just happened. So follow up with them and get them on another call. Can't emphasize that enough, but I think I have. So um, let's, uh, let's, let's move on, yeah? <laughs> I feel like I'm yapping, but no, it's just seriously very, very important stuff, guys. So that's what happens when the lead does not show. Now, if the lead does show, this is what you're going to do. There's three scenarios. You're either going to close the person and they become a client, or they're on the fence and they're not closed, call one. Or they're just not a good fit overall. They're not qualified. They shouldn't even have been on the call for what, for the for anyways. But if worst case scenario they got on the call and they weren't qualified, then and you didn't close them, that's what you do here. So three different variables, right? Now we'll start with the client close. So if the client was closed, right? Uh, that should actually shouldn't even be there. So if the client does get closed, right? You're gonna send them the onboarding flow slash funnel slash CA, CSM intro. Now, this is obviously going to depend on what offer you're working on. If you're working on RepConnect's internal offer or if you're working on uh, with one of our RepConnect clients and we're managing you as a sales rep, whatever the case may be, this is the onboarding is going to look a little bit different, but it's going to follow a similar structure where basically we just send an onboarding uh, or landing page, right? And it's a funnel to onboard them and automate that process. And then you also just make a WhatsApp group chat or uh, Discord, whatever the case may be, and connect the new client that just bought on that call with the client success manager or coach or whoever runs the fulfillment side of the of the program or offer or service whatever the case may be right so you do that and then after you do that you fill out all the admin work so the crm the finalized revenue you do the ar sheet the account receivables is what that means and then the eod you uh make sure you doc, like no, uh, you know you document this so you can actually put it in your end of day report as a closer and uh, all that stuff so Make sure you do your admin work as well. This is insanely important. We're not gonna, I, I say this in other videos, but we will let you go even if you're a good closer, if you're not doing your admin work because we need to know data so we can actually improve our marketing because all the data that you give us, one, we can't even pay you out if we, you know, you don't fill out this information because we don't even know who to pay and how much to pay for what client. So that's why that's super important. The end of day reports are insanely important because it gives us data to improve our sales process, improve our marketing and the leads that we're getting to you on the call. And so ultimately we can enhance that and you know optimize, I guess, and bring you better leads so you can earn more commissions because you're driving more revenue for the business because you're getting higher quality leads or they're being nurtured better. So that's why you getting as much data for us as you possibly can is insanely important. So we can just increase our company's processes overall, okay? And then obviously the CRM. If you close the deal, drag them to the section where it's close deal. It's super easy, it's not hard, so just do it. <laughs> okay, uh, next thing, um, on the fence slash not closed call one. So if it's like a lead that is just like, 
super interested, but like you, your objection handling and you're really trying to close them. But for whatever reason, you just can't get them to, to get it on that call. And it's also one of those where you're intuitively like, this is a good fit. And I don't want to sound desperate. I don't want to push it too hard. I think they actually genuinely might come back. This is what you, this is what you do. Okay. And now I want to say only 20% of people that don't close call one that say, let me think about it or just give me some time. Those are usually gaslights. They're usually other objections. So that's why you want to objection handle first. And your main goal is to close call one. This is for the rare, 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 rare scenario where you just intuitively think I shouldn't push this one anymore. I really should, you know, close this one on this call. I think I genuinely think they will come back on another call and you think it's, you know, that one out of every five people who actually will buy later, then this is what you do with those people. But I don't want you to use this as like, oh, you know, they're giving me objections, you know, they're interested. So I'm just going to push the call off and do this. No, objection handle and close call one because four out of five people will not come back. And so you're going to lose a lot of money not closing call one. But I'm saying for that one out of five people that you very intuitively think, genuinely just needs more time. You don't think you should push it even harder than you are. You are in objection handling as much as you are. If that's the case, then what I want you to do in this scenario is book an appointment. So book appointment number two. So a follow-up call to get them, you know, let them get whatever they needed to do within, you know, the 48 hour period. You shouldn't book them out longer than 48 hours. Ideally it's the next day. It definitely shouldn't be longer than two days, but you're going to book them in ASAP and you're going to want to do this on call. Now you don't want to do this off call. You don't want to be like, all right, man, well, yeah, I'll send you some information so you can book a call after this call. And yeah, I'll, I'll speak to you then. No, that's stupid. Get them to commit and book the next call while you're on the phone with them. That's super important. Okay. And so get them to book while you're on the call. But and like I said, guys, do if I see you doing a lot of these call to bookings, I'm just going to think you're a bad closer because most of your sales, you should be closing call one or they're just not a good fit and you should be dipping out on them. This is only for the rare exceptions where you they're really on the fence and you genuinely think they'll come back. I'm not going to explain this again. I, I just explained what this scenario is, but I don't want you just leaning into this with a lot of leads. This is like rare exceptions. It's either close them or they're probably not a good fit. Right. But if they're on the fence, go ahead and do that. Right. And so you're going to follow, you know, the lead booking pre nurture and follow up for the second appointment. So after you book the second appointment, you're going to go through our entire um, appointment setting process, which is taught in another video to get the, sh the lead to actually show up. Now it's the second call. So it's not going to be as hard to get them to show up to the second call because they've already proven themselves and shown up to the first one. So they've already showed that they're organized and serious about what we're doing. Um, but you still obviously want to follow up and ensure that they show up to the next call as well. Okay. Um, so make sure you do that. Now, the next option is, is uh, not a good fit slash not close. So not a good fit. I mean, for example, mainly financially. Um, the second thing is like, if they're not actually our ideal client profile or people that we want to push away, like if you have a person that's like, I want to make a hundred K in the next 48 hours or like, I'm not interested. That's probably not a good fit. You obviously are going to try to set proper expectations and be like, hey, man, that's like super unrealistic. X, Y, Z, Z, Z. But like there's many different reasons someone might not be a good fit. I'm not going to go super in depth in this on this video. I'm just trying to show you the overview. But um, if for whatever reason they're just not a good fit financially, you know, emotionally, mentally, you know, tangibly, whatever the heck it may be, um, what I want you guys to do in this scenario is – um, give the client free value slash community slash courses, et cetera. Now, the reason that you do this is because one, we want to give value to everybody, right? I don't want you to get on a call with somebody and you know, you tried to close them and you couldn't close them. And because they weren't spending money with them, you just see ya. No, that's stupid. What I want to do as a business and for all of our clients that we might've placed you in, we want to put a, you know, goodwill into the marketplace. Right. So we're going to give them free value and community and course and all the stuff that we have for free. We're going to send that to them on the call to their phone number or the WhatsApp group or whatever the case may be, just so they get the information. And so they have everything that they need that's free. And the reason we do this is so one, we can build our brand reputation. And even though we didn't, because like if you, if you were trying to close a dude and he didn't, he wasn't interested in buy, 
if someone says, Hey, have you heard about rep connect? They're like, yeah, you tried to sell me this blah, blah, blah. And like, forget that. No, if you gave them free stuff and someone says, Hey, have you heard about rep connect? Yeah. I got in a call. I personally wasn't a good fit, but you know, I've been going through their training and stuff and it's actually really cool. And like, yeah, it's a pretty cool company overall. Stuff like that. You get what I'm saying? Like, that's why this is very important. And another, I actually had a lead literally 20 minutes ago or right before I made this video, I had a lead, right? He actually reached out to me. He's like, Hey man, I just went through the training. You know, I'm actually interested in the next steps, you know, da, 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 can we book a call? And this is the second reason this is a very strong thing because they didn't close right now does not mean they're not going to close later. And so even if it's not a good fit and we couldn't close them right now, that doesn't mean they won't be a good fit a month down the line or six months down the line or 12 months down the line. And because you've already built a connection with them and you've given them this free information, free value, right? People will come back. Like our free stuff that we give on our personal offers and our clients offers, it's good stuff. When people go through that, they probably will reach back out. They do reach back out a lot of the times. And so this is actually going to bring you more people long term coming back to you asking you, hey, you know, I wasn't ready 30 days ago or two months ago or six months ago, but I've been going through your guys stuff. Obviously, you guys are legit. You know, I was just skeptical before. You know, can we book another call? And I'm, I'm actually interested in getting started now. Yes. Book the call. Boom. Now you got leads coming to you long term because they're nurturing in our free stuff. And so this is why even if it's not a good fit, you still give them that information. You still give them all the free resources, the community, the courses, everything that we have free for the specific offer that you're closing for. So uh, hopefully all this makes sense. So this is what you do if the lead doesn't show up. This is what you do if the lead, you know, uh, I mean, does show up and doesn't show up. You follow this whole process. So if the lead doesn't show up, you notify the setter, you follow up. You also follow up yourself. Uh, if the lead, you move it to the go high level, no show sequence. We have automations following up with them. You're also going to follow up with them twice a day on top of the setter also following up with them twice a day, trying to rebook the next appointment with them. And you're going to do that for 11 days after they missed their actual first booking. Okay. Now, if the lead did show up and they closed, you're going to do the onboarding process. You're going to fill all the admin work. And if they're on the fence, if that's, if it's that rare exception, Right, you're gonna book an appointment number two, so a follow up appointment within 48 hours, ideally the next day, and you're gonna book that in on that call, on the demo, not after the call. Okay, and then the next thing is, you know, if they're not a good fit and they're not closed, like I was just going over, you're gonna still give them free value, so you can put good free will into the marketplace and you know better our brand reputation and get them to come to you back back to you later on potentially because they're more nurtured and now they're not skeptical and they trust our business now and now they want to buy. And so that's what you're going to do as a high ticket closer on our personal offers or on our uh, clients offers. This is what you do with all of your book appointments. You know, if they show up, if they don't, if they show up, if they don't show up, whatever the case may be, this is the process you follow. Now, please watch this multiple times because you need to understand this is a high ticket closer on our offer. As you know, we're getting good appointments. We're spending a bunch of money on ads. We're nurturing them well before getting on the call with you. There's so many closers out there that you would not be hard to replace. I promise you, I have of over 70,000 sales reps. Now, do I want to replace you? No, I want to keep you on my team. So please just make sure you follow this to a T because if you don't, we will go find someone that will follow this and they will take follow up seriously and they will give the free value and they will, you know, close deals and they will hit their KPIs and their close rates and they will do all these things. We will go get someone that will if you won't. Long story short, we're a serious team. We need killers on our team. We're not playing around. And so watch this video multiple times. I need you to understand this entire thing to a T, right? And if you guys have any questions, as you guys know, please ask. We want to help you. We need you to understand this. So please ask questions, even if you're slightly confused. So all that being said, guys, it's been Brennan Swank with Rep Connect, and I will uh, see you guys in the next video. Peace.